Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we would be looking at ERD symbols and notations. So the resources that I would recommend you to refer to are these two web links, which I will also be posting in the D2L module. And I'm just going to bring that up here. So I did share some of um, this link um, on what is an ERD diagram in our previous video lecture, but I've also highlighted it again here because some of the specifics of um, cardinalities uh, we will be looking at here, especially this denotation here. We are going to specifically kind of look into that, um, the cross for information engineering style. So that's why I wanted to share this link. Um, also, this cross foot notation, this is the other resource that I've shared. It kind of talks about the history of the cross foot and also gives us more specific definitions on the entity, attributes, relationships. So this is a good reference for you to also refer to. Um, so what we are basically looking at in this um, lecture or this module is how can we take the maximum and minimum cardinality and represent it in the ER model that we will be developing. So again, um, to put it back in perspective, our ER model is more like a flow chart or a prototype of the database that we are going to be um, designing. If we are in the logical stage of developing the logical model. So there are a number of different ERD symbols and notations that are out there. The chance notation style is available, crow's foot, uh, batchman, UML, IDEF1X style. Um, these are all some symbols and notations that can be used. In this course, we are focusing on the crow's foot, also known as the information engineering style. This is the more commonly used ERD model in the database area. So we are focusing on using the cross foot information engineering style. So the cross foot is also known as the information engineering model. It's commonly used in database modeling. In this particular model, we represent entities as boxes. Relationships are represented as lines between the entities and the cardinalities are represented at the end of lines. So basically, we are going to learn this language. We are going to learn what the rules are so that we, as we are developing our ER model, we can denote the maximum and minimum cardinalities in our diagram. So again, entities, um, representation of a specific theme that we want to keep track of. Attributes are the properties of the entities that we want to keep track of. So this is an example of how we would denote an entity in the crow's foot in from our information engineering style. As you can see here, our entity is named as student and we represent it in a rectangular or a square box. The primary key is typically identified first and we have the notation PK. As you can see, this entity's primary key is student ID and the other entity attributes that we want to include in the entity are represented below. First name, last name. So we don't have to represent all the entities um, as we keep developing and uh, refurnishing our model. We can go through a number of different iterations in our ER model until we get to our final stage. Um, and at the final point, we kind of represent all the different entities that we want to represent in that particular um, for that particular entity. So when it comes to the cross foot, again, we have learned about maximum cardinality and minimum cardinality. When we are going to relate two relation, um, entities together, we need to show maximum and minimum cardinality in the relationship. So as you can see here in the cross foot, when we are representing maximum cardinality, it is shown at the outside edge and we'll look at some more examples so it'll be more clear. A maximum cardinality of one is denoted as a one symbol or a straight line as shown in this arrow here. And the maximum cardinality of many is denoted as shown here in a cross foot symbol. So that's why this is also known as the cross foot. But you have to keep in mind that the cross foot denotes a multiplicity of many. Um, minimum cardinality is shown in the inside of the line, as you can see this arrow here. A straight line or a hash is denoted as a mandatory here. When you define, remember, if you remember with minimum cardinality, you have mandatory 
or zero or optional as our two choices here. And if it's a mandatory, we represent it with a straight hash line. On the other hand, if it's optional, we're going to denote it with the small o here, and that denotes an optional minimum cardinality. So what does this mean as we are going to relate entities together? Let's look at the big picture here. Here, we are looking at the relationship between two entities. We have student and we have seat, and we are representing the maximum and minimum cardinalities here. Note, as we just discussed, your maximum cardinality is always on the outside. So what I'm moving my curve here, that's your maximum cardinality. And next to seat, um, you have your maximum cardinality here. Minimum is what you have in the inside of the relationship line. So this is your minimum cardinality and this is your minimum cardinality. So when we're looking at the maximum cardinality between student and seat, it's a one. It's, and when you're looking at the minimum cardinality in from student to seat, you have a mandatory here. When you look from student to seat, you have a one. And at the outer box also, you have a one. So the maximum cardinality is one and the minimum cardinality is also one. Now let's go back and look at the maximum cardinality in the direction of seat to student. Um, when you look at seat to student, the maximum cardinality here is also one. And when you look at the seat to student, the minimum cardinality is also mandatory. So let's try to see how we can interpret this. This means that a student can have only one seat um, and a seat can be owed by only one student. That's the min maximum cardinality explanation. Minimum cardinality is a student needs to have a seat to exist and in the other, other direction a seat needs to be owned by a student for it to exist so that's why we have a one one here so this particular relationship you're looking at a one to one maximum cardinality and you're also looking at a mandatory in both ways which means that student needs a seat and a seat also needs to have a student to exist that's the minimum cardinality here Let's look at more examples. Here, we are looking at the relationship between lecture, lecturer and course here. Again, we have to pay close attention to the outside. This is the maximum cardinality. And as you can see here, the crow's foot that represents the maximum cardinality is again at the outside near your entities here. Your minimum cardinality is in the inside, as you can see here and here. So let's look at how we can interpret the maximum cardinalities here. The maximum cardinality between lecture and course, when you're looking at lecture to course, it's a one to many relationship. So how it's a one to many, but when you're looking at lecture to course, the maximum cardinality is many. Course to lecture, the maximum cardinality would be one. The minimum cardinality in the direction of lecturer to course is optional as you can see this oval here and from course to lecturer it is mandatory or required so how can we interpret this so we are looking at the interpretation of maximum cardinality a lecturer can teach many courses a course is taught by one lecturer uh, when we are looking at the minimum cardinality explanation here again a lecturer does not need to teach a course. Why is that? That's because when you look from lecturer to course, the minimum cardinality has an oval shape, which it means that it's optional. So we interpret it by saying lecturer does not need to teach a course. But when we go from the direction from course to lecturer, you see that the minimum cardinality is a hash, which means that it's required or mandatory. So we have to say that a course needs to be associated or needs to have a lecturer to exist. So that's why the minimum cardinality here is required. Um, let's look at another example here, interpreting cardinalities. We're looking at student to course. We have two entities here. Um, again, we are going to look at the maximum cardinality. As you can see, the maximum cardinality is always represented at the very end, which is very close to the entities. When we look at it, we see the cross foot symbol in both representing the maximum cardinality of many. 
So the maximum cardinality in the direction from student to course is many. From course to student, the maximum cardinality is many. Now let's look at the minimum cardinality. Minimum cardinality in the direction from student to course is optional. From course to student would also be optional. So how do we interpret this um, again? So when we're looking at maximum cardinality, a student can enroll in many courses. A course can have many students. That's your maximum cardinality here. What about your minimum cardinality? A student does not need to enroll in a course to exist as an entity. Vice versa, a course does not need to have students to exist as an entity. So that's why these two are optional minimum cardinalities. More examples. So we're looking at interpreting what is the maximum and minimum cardinality between author and book. Also, what does that mean? So again, we're going to first start by looking at the maximum cardinality author to book. As you look at the very outside, it has a crow's foot symbol from author to book. You're seeing a crow's foot symbol and from book to author, you have a crow's foot symbol. So what does that mean? Author to book would be many and book to author would also be many. So the interpretation would say an author can have many books. A book can be written by more than one author or many authors. So that's your maximum cardinality. Let's look at the minimum cardinality. Author to book, when you go in that direction, you're seeing the hashtag, which means that it is required or mandatory. Book to author, you're seeing the hashtag um, or the uh, one symbol, which means that book to author is also a required or mandatory minimum cardinality. So we can interpret that to say author needs to have a book associated for it to exist and vice versa, a book needs to have at least one author as an author for it to exist. So this is how we go about interpreting our maximum and minimum cardinalities. Again, keep in mind that these cardinalities are really defined from the business rules. We investigate it, we create our entities and we represent the maximum and minimum cardinalities in our models.